In today's Ask the Experts segment, we spoke with Dr. Mario Raviglioni, Director of the Global Tuberculosis Program at the World Health Organization, and asked him what can be done to fight multidrug resistant TB in Africa. The MDR TB crisis is not solved, and in fact, it remains at crisis level, and it really needs to be addressed uh, forcefully, otherwise, it's just going to expand, and this is not good for the control of tuberculosis in general and for the people who suffer out of this disease. African countries more or less uh, produce, so to speak, 25% of TB cases in the world, but with the highest rates per capita. So it's an epidemic there that is very serious because it's often associated with HIV. So it's something that has to be faced very, very strongly over there like it has been the case for uh, the HIV epidemic. They created you know, national AIDS commissions that were reporting to the head of state. We would like to see this kind of commitment, this kind of push from uh, uh, also the same you know, ministers and governments for tuberculosis. South Africa, for instance, is a good model. In the case of the Minister of Health of South Africa, they really did a great job in, for instance, covering the entire country with expert, which is the, our recommended diagnostic, and they are now making available new drugs. The other example I like to cite is always Ethiopia, because they have a primary care system system there that is based on the health extension workers that I find exceptional and that's where people go when they have cough. They go to these health extension workers in the villages and they can be then sent to the appropriate level where the diagnosis is made. At the moment it is going down at 1.5 percent per year which means it will take 250 years to get to that level unless we accelerate. So what we have now uh, proposed to all the ministers of health is a different model that will push the incidence down at 10 percent per year in 2025 but uh, that that, that, that means basically essentially doing everything that we have available today including prophylaxis among people for instance with HIV or the minors in southern Africa and so on. If we have, we're, we're able to do that we could push it down to 10% per year in 2025 however after that we will need new tools that's why there is always our appeal to African countries participate in research efforts because we really need every possible uh, strength you know that you have in uh, contributing to that with new tools new diagnostics new drugs and pot potentially new vaccine in uh, you know one day then we would be able to reach these targets in 2030 and 2035 that was dr mario raviglioni speaking with us about fighting multi-drug resistant tb in africa now the world health organization has issued an urgent call for scientists to develop new drugs and for governments to fund the research Unless new antibiotics are developed quickly, people will once again die from common infections. Here is VOA's Carol Pearson. The world is entering a time when common infections caused by bacteria will be deadly, and doctors are alarmed. You all of a sudden understand what it was like to practice medicine maybe 50, 70, 80 years ago when there weren't antibiotics. New antibiotics are urgently needed against bacteria that pose the greatest threat to human health. Those most at risk, residents of nursing homes, hospital patients, and children. Children may have weaker immune systems than adults, and they receive smaller doses of antibiotics than adults do. For the longest time, we've had a number of different antibiotics in the pipeline at any given time. And so whenever we ran out of the ability to use one, we would move to the next one. But that's no longer possible. In 2010, the U.S. began work to develop new antibiotics. There are antibiotics in the pipeline, but the numbers are insufficient. Uh, they're insufficient to deal with the increasing rates of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And they're insufficient to deal with the normal mutations. Bacteria are constantly changing to find new ways to resist the drugs that kill them. Once they develop that ability, they can pass it on so other bacteria can become drug-resistant as well. We are seeing greater than two million episodes of antibiotic resistant infections in people each year in the U.S. alone. And 23,000 of these episodes result in death. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has asked hospitals and doctors to be careful not to overuse antibiotics. But beyond overuse, there are other reasons these drugs are being rendered powerless. Antibiotic resistance is not only being generated by using too many antibiotics, uh, but also by spread of infection from lack of hygiene, 
uh, from uh, unintended uh, contact with soiled surfaces, uh, things of that sort. So the infection control side is equally important. Patients can also help. On its website, the CDC says take antibiotics as prescribed and finish the prescription, even if you feel better. Still, urgent action on a global level is needed to prevent the catastrophe that a post-antibiotic era would cause. Carol Pearson, VOA News, Washington.